Um, hey, by the way, as comedians, are you guys afraid of this shit? What happened to Tony Hinchcliffe the other day? No, we do it all the time. People, uh, people threw up a picture of me dressed in Asian garb right after Tony got kicked off the show. We're at Vulcan Gas Company this past weekend. Uh, Friday well and Saturday. Last night was the last show. Yeah, they were great. and so uh, people, <laughs> people, saw, so we, there's like a group of cancelers that are horrible. But I get it. Tony's in a position where he's done network stuff and stuff. We don't do that. We just make our own way. Well, so. you guys were with Compound, and Compound doesn't give two fucks. Right? No, the you more trouble give, we get in, the yeah. more like we we are to get a raise. You yeah, got to give a shout out to to Anthony Cumia who set yeah, it yeah. up because yeah, he 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 was he's ahead of the curve. Like he, he was knew. He, he was he one of the canceled. first canceled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. way back in the day and that's why people gave him so much crap on my words like well this should be free and you're you're kneecapping yourself and then year after year more people are getting this canceled and i say this to aaron all the time like we can't be canceled because everything we say first of all you watch it with a cover charge second of all we were lucky enough to to build a, a well thanks to anthony to build a legion of fans mm. you know when the world went crazy and everyone's like, I want to be on TV, why? Now there's so many platforms where you can get your own fan base and they will do the, the advertising and promotion for you and bring in like-minded people. So when someone's like, I can't believe Aaron or Gino said that, they're like, yeah, they're great. No, I, I want to, you can't, you can't. And yeah, we're in a, and we got no ads either. We have no advertisers at all. How, so do it, you, how do you support yourself then if you don't have advertisers? Subscription based only. So it's... Uh, and merchandise and shit as yeah, well. We yeah, we sell merch and, you know, we, we perform live too, but it's like, uh, it, it all kind of amalgamates itself. You know, the fan base is very loyal, as I'm sure yours is. And it's like, you know, we came to Austin this weekend. People flew from all around the country it's to come amazing. here. People drove like six, eight, ten hours to be here. Um, and they're just, they're really really strong as a fan base and the, and they just love the fact that we can still say stuff that you can't say anywhere else and they're like just keep going uh and sometimes it gets hard you know i kind of pussy out a little bit sometimes i'll be like yeah we shouldn't do that and then i'm like ah whatever he tells me i'm half in half out because i still want to be on the tonight show sometimes but you don't do a five really, minute spot the only time i really saw him uh like back down and it was dumb it was that it was that it was a joke <laughs> my sister came to a show she brought this really hot asian chick scorching and up. i have this scorching joke up. where i go i'm monogamous which if you don't know is one woman for the rest of my life and hundreds of asian hands and uh and this hot asian woman was there so i changed it to hundreds of masseuse's hands and it killed the joke you couldn't even look yeah. me oh. in the eye that's the only time and he's hysterical as long as i've known him, he couldn't i'm like you know what you did. He's I like, remember yeah. I remember seeing Norm McDonald <laughs> at uh, Cobbs in San Francisco. Uh, that was a great comedy club, by the way. Yeah, it was. Yeah, that shut down. I didn't realize. Yeah. No, it's still there. But right it, the oh, building exists. Well, okay. but, I mean, he. Well, this was in 2015, I think, and he came in, and this was this was right around the time when the trans talk was getting super fucking dicey for a lot of people, right? And uh, he just came in and did 45 minutes. His first 45 minutes were all trans jokes. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. lighting people up without any regard. Yeah. I think Todd Berry was his opener that night. Oh, or wow. He was, or he was, they were on the same show. I don't remember who, what order it was in. Yeah. But man, it was hilarious. Because I'm sitting there in the crowd with my uh, like semi-woke girlfriend at the time, which was a mistake. <laughs> and um, I'm laughing my ass off right. at every single joke. And I'm looking around and there's like, it's like 50-50. Mm -hmm. Now it would be... I think, honestly, here in Austin, it's usually about 80% of the crowd's laughing, and then 20% of the crowd, which are all white women between the ages of, like, 28 and 45 or so, are just sitting there like, no, canceled. Yeah. Just like, shut the fuck up. You didn't come here to be entertained? I need to sit and read, because I read the first three pages of it, like, all, and then I stopped. 1984 again, I'm sure a lot of people have, but even in the first three pages, like, just when you think Orwell couldn't have been more on the mark, he, right. he talks about cancel culture, 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 and he's literally saying it's, he won't look at beautiful women. He's like, there's a beautiful woman at work, I won't look at her because they're the ones, I can't remember the line, but he basically predicted cancel culture would be yeah. the young, you know, hot white chicks right. who are just like, I'm offended, but no one else cares. Well, what we're living in now is kind of a mix between uh, 1984 to Brave New World. Because if you remember, one of the big premises of a Brave New World was subtracting language from the, uh, from the dictionary. I never right. read that one. Right, so it was it. like, instead of having bad, you would have the word good and ungood, right? right. So d manipulating language for a specific reason so you can basically propagandize. Yeah.